Greetings, my dear viewer. This is a channel about marital infidelity and about the consequences if one spouse starts to cheat on the other. If you, as well as I do, support true family values and condemn cheating, then subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Let's get started. The evening had begun like any other, but there was a palpable tension in the air. The enticing aroma of dinner, lovingly prepared by Laura, still lingered in the kitchen, a reminder of warmth and comfort. Robert sat at the table, holding a mug of coffee that had long since lost its warmth, absent-mindedly tracing the rim with his fingers. The crackling of the wood-burning fireplace usually wrapped him in a cozy embrace, but tonight it only amplified the oppressive silence that enveloped the room. His gaze was fixed on the mug as his thoughts drifted through the mundane details of the day, a monotonous cycle from which there seemed no escape. Suddenly, the sound of footsteps broke through his reverie. He looked up, expecting to see Laura's familiar smile, but the way she entered the room caught him off guard. She moved deliberately, each step measured, as if she were carrying an invisible burden. Leaning against the counter, she fixed her gaze on him, her eyes searching his face for hidden thoughts. Darling, she began, her voice steady but tinged with something deeper, something elusive and unsettling. A flicker of concern crossed Robert's face as he met her gaze. What's wrong, Laura? he asked in an even tone, though a sense of unease began to gnaw at the back of his mind. He sensed that this was not an ordinary conversation. There was a tension in the air, and the evening routine seemed like a fragile facade, ready to shatter at any moment. She hesitated, uncertainty flashing across her face as if she were weighing the gravity of her decision. A heavy silence hung between them, taut like a string ready to snap. Robert felt the palpable tension, though its source eluded him. Finally, Laura took a deep breath, her expression hardening as she prepared to reveal the secret she had been holding inside. There's someone I want you to meet, she declared, the words spilling from her lips with an urgency that surprised even her. Robert raised an eyebrow in confusion. Meet someone? What do you mean? Skepticism crept into his tone, though he tried to keep it steady. Without waiting for a response, Laura tilted her head toward the doorway, making an inviting gesture. From the shadows, a figure emerged, stepping into the dim light of the kitchen. Robert's eyes narrowed as he took in the newcomer, a tall, muscular man whose very presence seemed to command the space around him. Meet Marcus, Laura announced, her voice gaining strength as if she were summoning the courage to press forward. From now on, this man will live here with us. The words hit Robert like a slap, piercing through him. He gripped his mug tighter, the ceramic digging into his palms. Live with us, he echoed, his voice steady, but disbelief laced his words. Inside him a storm began to brew, setting the stage for a confrontation he hadn't seen coming. Laura stood her ground, unwavering. Yes, you must share me with him, she stated, her voice cutting through the tension like a knife, her arms crossed defiantly over her chest, projecting a challenge. Robert, you don't have the right to say no if you plan to resist. There was a brief pause, and in that moment, Robert caught a glimpse of vulnerability flickering in her eyes. Otherwise, Marcus will knock your teeth out, she warned her tone shifting slightly. But Robert remained rooted in place, his mind grappling with the whirlwind of emotions and realities crashing down on him. Shifting his gaze from Laura to Marcus, he leaned against the wall with a smug smile, a disquieting calm radiating from him. The atmosphere was thick with tension, each second stretching into eternity. Robert felt a cold fury rising within him, threatening to spill over, but he willed himself to stay composed. Silently, he pushed back his chair, the wooden legs scraping against the floor like a warning bell. Slowly, he rose to his feet, locking eyes with Marcus, and a silent challenge hung between them. A suffocating silence enveloped the room as Robert turned and walked out of the kitchen. Each of his steps echoed down the hallway, deliberate and filled with ominous weight. Laura watched him leave, her heart pounding with uncertainty, caught between anticipation and fear. She expected an outburst of anger, yelling, or tears, but instead, he slipped away with an eerie, controlled calm. 
On the other side, Marcus reveled in the discomfort he had created, his smirk growing wider as he fed off the chaos he had sown. That's it. I told you that loser doesn't stand a chance against me, Marcus sneered, arrogance dripping from his voice. But Laura remained silent, her heart racing. Something was wrong, and she couldn't shake the feeling that a storm was brewing. Robert's abrupt departure and the unsettling calm he exuded had thrown her off balance. A thousand anxious thoughts raced through her mind, each more terrifying than the last. Suddenly the sound of footsteps interrupted her thoughts. Robert was returning. She turned toward the doorway, her breath catching in her throat as he re-entered the room. His face was a mask of unreadable emotions, but his eyes held an icy resolve that sent a shiver down her spine. In his hand, he clutched something that made her blood run cold. A hunting knife, its blade reflecting the soft light of the kitchen lamps. Robert, what are you doing? Laura's voice trembled but the words faded as she saw the fierce determination etched on his face. Before she could process the moment, Robert lunged forward with a ferocity that caught both her and Marcus off guard. In the blink of an eye, he closed the distance between himself and Marcus. The knife glinted menacingly as it sliced through the air, and Marcus's smug grin faded as the realization hit him. But it was already too late. Robert's first strike was a brutal flash of movement. The blade slashed across Marcus's arm with a precision that took her breath away. Marcus let out a guttural roar and staggered backward, clutching the gaping wound. The gravity of the moment crashed over him like a tidal wave. This was no ordinary confrontation. It was a fight for survival. Laura's scream pierced the air, a mix of horror and disbelief. She stumbled back, covering her mouth with her hands, her eyes wide with terror. Stop, Robert! Why are you doing this? But Robert was deaf to her pleas, his gaze locked on Marcus with unyielding force. Gasping in desperation, Marcus swung a fist at Robert, but the blow only glanced off his shoulder, barely slowing him down. Marcus had no time to comprehend the danger. He instinctively retreated, his eyes widening in shock. But the knife was faster. Robert staggered, blood beginning to seep from a jagged wound on his arm. You think you can just come into my house and threaten me? He growled, his voice carrying a menacing echo. He took a menacing step forward, his eyes fixed on Marcus. There was no hesitation, no trace of fear in his gaze, only cold, calculated rage simmering beneath the surface. Marcus, clutching his injured arm to staunch the bleeding, felt his shock give way to fury. You're insane! He shouted, his voice a mix of pain and disbelief. Robert, stop! Laura's voice cut through the tense atmosphere, and she took a hesitant step toward the two men, reaching out as if she could somehow bridge the chasm of violence that had opened between them. Grasping a shred of clarity amid the chaos, Marcus lunged at Robert, using his bulk like a battering ram. The impact sent them crashing into the wall, and the collision was strong enough to knock the knife from Robert's hand, sending it clattering to the floor, slipping from his grasp. For a brief moment, it seemed as if Marcus had gained the upper hand, pinning Robert against the wall, his face twisted in a mask of rage. Pathetic, he sneered, contempt dripping from every word. Marcus leaned in closer, his breath hot and heavy against Robert. You're just a pathetic loser, incapable of even satisfying your own wife. Robert's eyes narrowed, a storm brewing inside him, but he held his tongue. His mind raced, calculating assessing the situation, searching for a glimmer of hope. His gaze darted to the knife lying tantalizingly close, yet just out of reach, and the tension in the room crackled like a live wire. Robert knew he had to get the knife before Marcus could unleash more chaos. A surge of adrenaline ignited Robert's resolve, and he pushed Marcus back with force. Caught off guard, Marcus stumbled, momentarily losing his footing. Without a second thought, Robert lunged for the knife, his fingers closing around the hilt just as Marcus regained his balance and charged at him. Robert was now ready for the confrontation. As Marcus closed in on him, Robert pivoted, and the blade slashed upward in a swift, brutal arc. The shock of pain hit Marcus like a freight train, paralyzing him for an instant. For a moment, everything froze. The world around them faded, leaving only the sound of Marcus's ragged breathing as he gasped desperately, clutching at the wound. 
Laura's scream pierced the silence, a high-pitched cry of horror that shattered the tension like glass. She rushed to Marcus and collapsed beside him, her hands trembling as she tried to staunch the flow of blood. Yet despite her frantic efforts, the crimson stream continued to pour, staining her hands and pooling ominously on the floor beneath them. Oh my God, Robert! She cried out, panic evident in her voice. What's going on? She shouted, her voice breaking as she stared at her husband with wide eyes filled with disbelief and terror, as if trying to grasp the reality of the chaos unfolding before her. Robert stood over them, breathing heavily, tension still coursing through him from the adrenaline of the fight. Robert hesitated, unsure of how to respond to her immediately. His gaze was fixed on Marcus, who lay on the ground, his life fading like a dying candle. There was no joy in Robert's expression, no sense of victory. Only a cold resolve hung heavy in the air. When Marcus tried to speak, the words caught in his throat, like shards of glass. Pain pulsed through him, relentless and all-consuming. His eyes darted from Robert to Laura, searching for comfort, a last drop of solace. But now she had nothing to offer. Nothing could ease his suffering. What do you think I was supposed to do when you neglected our marriage? Robert finally broke the silence, his voice cutting through the tension like a knife. He turned his gaze on Laura, meeting her tear-filled eyes with an unwavering stare. There was no sympathy in his gaze, no hint of remorse, only the unyielding reality of his actions. Laura's mind raced, trying to make sense of the nightmare unraveling before her. We need to call emergency services, she insisted, her voice trembling with desperation. She fumbled for the phone, her fingers slick with blood, but they trembled too much to dial. Please, Robert. Frozen in place, Robert watched the chaos unfold before him. Laura struggled with the phone, her anxiety escalating with each passing second. The reality of their situation was inescapable. There was no going back now. No one could change what had already been done. He had made his choice, and so had she. You brought him here, Robert said quietly his voice now a chilling whisper. You brought this trouble upon yourself. Finally managing to dial the emergency number, Laura realized deep down that it was already too late. Marcus's life was seeping away onto the floor, a crimson pool spreading into his clothes and staining her hands. She pressed desperately against the wound, but it was like trying to hold back an unstoppable tide. With each breath, Marcus grew more ragged, and every breath became a painful struggle as his strength ebbed away. Don't leave me, Marcus! Laura's voice cracked, filled with desperation. Help is on the way! Just hold on! But Marcus remained silent, his eyes distant and unfocused. His body was betraying him, growing weaker by the second. He tried not to focus on her, but his vision blurred, and the world around him began to fade. His grip on her hand loosened, and he tilted his head forward silently surrendering to the encroaching darkness. Please do something! Laura cried out, her panic rising like a tidal wave. Tears streamed down Laura's face as she looked at her husband with pleading eyes, a storm of fear and despair etched across her features. We can't let him die, she implored. But Robert remained frozen, a still figure in the suffocating silence, his gaze fixed on Marcus whose life was slipping away like sand through an hourglass. Deep down, Robert believed this was the inevitable end of their twisted story. Saving Marcus was impossible, as was reviving their shattered marriage. The betrayal had cut deep wounds, leaving scars that would forever cast a shadow over their lives. The distant wail of sirens cut through the silence, growing louder as they approached, and Laura's heart pounded in her chest a chaotic dance of hope and terror. She turned back to Marcus, but his eyes had sunk into darkness, the once bright spark of life dimming to a faint flicker. The arrogance that once defined him was replaced by emptiness, a shell of the man he used to be. Robert, please, she whispered, her voice trembling and barely audible, yet the weight of her words hung in the air, crushing any hope of resolution. Suddenly the door burst open, and paramedics stormed into the room like a whirlwind. Their movements were swift and precise as they pushed Laura aside and focused grimly on Marcus. One of them reached for a radio, and the urgency in his voice cut through the chaos like a knife. Yet as they worked feverishly, 
An unspoken truth settled over the room. It was already too late. Laura stood frozen, a statue of despair, while the paramedics tirelessly tried to stabilize Marcus. Their hands moved with the precision of seasoned professionals, but the tension on their faces revealed the grim reality. The quick, covert glances they exchanged, tiny, unspoken signals, told of a desperate race against time, with the odds not in their favor. Instinctively stepping aside to make room for the bustling team, Robert retreated, but his gaze remained locked on Marcus, unwilling to tear himself away from the unfolding chaos. He watched as Marcus was lifted onto a stretcher, the blood-soaked sheets stark against his pale skin. Their movements were swift, but there was an eerie finality to their actions, a heavy sense of inevitability that weighed on everyone in the room. Laura tensed, ready to follow Marcus as they wheeled him out of the house, but a paramedic gently yet firmly held her back. Ma'am, you need to stay here, he said, his voice calm amidst the turmoil. We're doing everything we can. She nodded, too overwhelmed to protest, her heart breaking as she watched the stretcher disappear through the doorway. The silence that engulfed the house was suffocating. It was as if time had stopped. The only sound that pierced the stillness was the distant wail of the ambulance siren, rushing Marcus away to the hospital. Robert stood in the middle of the room, breathing heavily. His mind replayed the events that had spiraled out of control just minutes earlier. He knew he would have to face the consequences of his actions, but that thought was barely graspable. The searing rage that had driven him was now replaced by a chilling clarity. Laura turned to face him, her expression a mix of confusion and anger. In that moment, everything had changed, and the weight of their choices was heavier than ever. Her eyes were red and swollen, evidence of the tears that had fallen like rain. What happens next? she asked in a voice so thin it was almost a whisper. Meeting her gaze, Robert masked his uncertainty. I'll tell them the truth, he replied, his voice steady and resolute. And we'll see what happens. Laura's heart ached under the weight of the situation. There was no turning back now. They had crossed an irreversible line, and the shadow of their actions would haunt them forever. The house, once filled with chaos and anger, was now engulfed in an eerie silence. This silence was broken only by Laura's muffled sobs as she knelt beside Marcus, battling the encroaching darkness. Her hands were stained with blood, desperately pressing against a wound that seemed to bleed endlessly, staining the floor beneath them. Marcus's breath was ragged, growing weaker with every passing second. Just a few steps away stood Robert, his eyes fixed on the scene before him, a storm of emotions raging within him. His grip on the knife had loosened, but the tension in his body remained, coiled like a spring. Laura watched him, sensing the turmoil in his heart. A grim satisfaction flickered within him. He had defended his pride, his territory, but it was quickly overshadowed by a deep emptiness. She had been everything to him, and yet they stood on the brink of destruction. Laura, he finally spoke, his voice softer now barely disturbing the oppressive silence. The anger that had once fueled him began to unravel, transforming into a painful complexity that twisted in his chest. Why did you do it? Robert demanded, his voice rough. Laura looked up at him, her tear-streaked face reflecting fear, guilt, and regret. The words came with difficulty, her voice trembling. I... I don't know, darling. I felt so bored. I was so lonely. I decided. I thought maybe you didn't care. A bitter laugh escaped Robert's lips, filled with disbelief. You thought I wouldn't care? Laura, you were everything to me. I gave you everything, and you threw away forty-three years of marriage for this. He gestured towards Marcus, who lay on the ground, barely clinging to consciousness, his life slipping away with each shallow breath. Laura lacked the strength to meet Robert's gaze. Inside, she felt the weight of her betrayal, piercing her heart like a sharp knife. I'm sorry, she whispered, the words escaping her lips like a feeble sigh. But even as she spoke, she realized the emptiness of her apology. What could it possibly mean after everything that had happened? Robert's gaze shifted back to Marcus, who hovered in a painful dance between consciousness and oblivion. 
the reality of the moment hung in the air, suffocating and inescapable. Just an hour ago, perhaps, Robert might have felt pity or guilt for Marcus's dire state. Now, however, he was consumed by a chilling sense of detachment, as cold as the night air. He knew all too well that without medical intervention, Marcus's time was running out, yet he felt strangely indifferent. Laura, you've already made your choice, he said, his voice turning icy as the weight of reality pressed down on him. And now you'll have to live with it. Without a second glance, Robert turned and walked out of the room. Behind him, Laura's sobs echoed, but he did not falter. Stepping out into the cool night air, he let the door close behind him, sealing himself off from the chaos inside. Outside, a deep silence reigned, starkly contrasting with the storm of emotions he had just left behind. The burden of doubt, anger, and pain that had weighed on him for so long seemed to lift, replaced by an unsettling clarity. Robert descended the porch steps, his feet instinctively leading him to the edge of the property. It was a serene night, the stars twinkling against the clear sky like distant memories. He paused, taking a deep breath, trying to calm the whirlwind of thoughts racing through his mind. The adrenaline that had surged through him during the confrontation was dissipating, leaving behind a gnawing emptiness in his chest. As he gazed into the enveloping darkness, Images of the life he had shared with Laura flashed before him, those bright days filled with laughter, dreams, and plans for the future, now seeming like a distant echo, as if they belonged to someone else. The woman now in that house, mourning the fading life of her beloved, was a stranger to him. She had once been Laura, a bright spirit capable of lighting up an entire room. But now, standing outside in the crisp night air, he wondered if he had ever truly known her at all. In the months leading up to this moment, he had watched her withdraw into herself, the spark in her eyes dimming to a faint flicker. He had noticed it, of course, but had dismissed it as a temporary storm they would weather together. With every fiber of his being, he believed their love was unbreakable, capable of withstanding any storm. And now, he was confronted with the chilling realization of his own delusion. The heavy silence was pierced by the distant wail of sirens. The paramedics would arrive soon, their frantic efforts aimed at saving Marcus. But Robert felt a deep certainty that it was already too late. The damage was irreparable, and no amount of heroic effort could fix what had been broken. He glanced back at the house. Warm light spilled from the windows onto the lawn, creating a comforting contrast with the despair hanging in the air. For a moment, he thought of returning inside of checking on Laura, searching for remnants of the love they once shared. But the memory of her introducing Marcus to him in that icy tone hit him like a slap. The contempt in her gaze was unmistakable. No, there was nothing left for him there. The house that once felt like home had turned into a mausoleum of memories. His former life was shattered, and there was no way back. Robert walked resolutely toward the end of the driveway, each step heavy and final. The sirens grew louder, but he moved at his own pace, savoring the last moments of the past. There was no need to hurry. This was a farewell he never wanted, but could no longer avoid. The police were already on their way, the sirens wailing in the distance, and Robert prepared himself for the inevitable questions. He had no reason to hide the truth. He had acted in self-defense, protecting his home and his dignity. Reaching the end of the driveway, he paused casting a longing glance at the house, a silent witness to the chaos that had unfolded within its walls. Before him loomed a stark reminder of everything he had lost. A sharp pain of regret pierced his heart, but it was quickly smothered by a steely resolve. The cacophony of sirens grew louder, drawing nearer. Robert took a deep breath, bracing himself for what lay ahead. The future was shrouded in uncertainty, but one thing was clear. He would face whatever came with the same courage he had shown tonight. As the flashing lights illuminated the street, Robert stood his ground, waiting for the first responders to arrive. When the ambulance and police vehicles finally pulled up to the driveway, he was overcome by a surprising sense of calm. He had faced the unthinkable and emerged a different man. Now, there was only the aftermath of the night's events to deal with. The paramedics rushed past him, sensing the urgency 
not giving him a second glance as they dashed into the house. Robert's heart was pounding, but his mind remained clear and focused. Soon the police officers approached him, their faces stern, but he did not flinch. He was ready. Sir, we need to ask you a few questions, one of the officers stated, his tone firm but not unkind. Robert met their gaze, ready to tell them everything. Robert nodded in agreement, a quiet determination settling within him. I'll tell you everything, he said, his voice steady and unyielding. There was no room for deception here. The truth was harsh and undeniable, etched onto the blood-spattered floor of his home. As he stood there, bathed in the flashing lights of the police cars, Robert felt an unexpected sense of release wash over him. The past was a shattered mirror, each fragment too jagged to piece together. But the future, it was a blank canvas, waiting for his brush. With a heavy heart, he watched the chaos unfold around him, the paramedics rushing to help, the police moving with grim determination. That house, once filled with memories, would never be his refuge again. Now, he was ready to step into a new life, leaving behind the echoes of the past. Climbing into the back seat of the police car, he closed his eyes and exhaled, realizing he had been holding his breath. The weight of the night began to lift, and for the first time in what felt like an eternity, Robert felt he was finally moving in the right direction. The following days blurred together. The arrival of the police marked the end of the nightmare that had unfolded within those walls. By the time they arrived, Marcus was already gone, a casualty of the chaos that had erupted. Robert could still hear Laura's frantic screams echoing in his ears, her face a mask of terror and disbelief. And yet strangely he felt nothing as they led him away from the wreckage. The storm had raged, but now, at last, it was over. In the harsh clinical room, more a prison than a place of justice, Robert sat in the relentless cold of the interrogation room. The walls were uniformly gray, and the table and chairs were functional, not comfortable, making Robert shift uneasily in his seat. His gaze was fixed on the one-way mirror, a silent reminder that unseen eyes were watching his every move, assessing his worth and deciding his fate. But despite the gravity of the situation, he was overcome with a chilling sense of detachment, as if he were observing the unfolding drama from a distance, as if the chaos that had consumed his life belonged to someone else. Just when the silence became unbearable, his lawyer appeared, a sharp-eyed woman known for her tenacity in the courtroom. She listened intently as he recounted the horrifying details, her expression a mask of professionalism, but beneath it, Robert sensed a glimmer of resolve. We'll have to argue this as self-defense, she assured him, her voice firm. What followed was a relentless legal battle, a clash of narratives akin to a duel. The prosecution painted Robert as a jealous, volatile husband who had lost control, while the defense portrayed him as a man pushed to the brink, forced to act out of self-preservation in the face of betrayal and imminent danger. The trial reached its most intense moment when Laura took the stand. Her voice trembled as she recounted the fateful night, and Robert caught a flicker of guilt in her eyes. He didn't meet her gaze, as if the weight of their shared history was too much to bear. In the end, it was the evidence, or lack thereof, that tipped the scales in his favor. Marcus had intruded into Robert's home uninvited, a threat had loomed, and in the ensuing chaos, Robert had done what he believed was necessary to survive. The courthouse doors swung open, and Robert stepped outside, finally a free man. The charges had been dropped, but the ordeal weighed heavily on him, both mentally and physically. Meanwhile, Laura's world had crumbled in a different way. The affair and the ensuing chaos had transformed her from a figure of elegance and respect into the subject of quiet conversations and gossip that echoed throughout the town. Once surrounded by friends, Laura now faced their harsh judgment, a stark contrast to the admiration she had once inspired. Crushed by the unending humiliation, she packed her belongings and disappeared, leaving no trace behind. Robert heard whispers from mutual acquaintances that she had moved to another state, but he couldn't bring himself to dig any deeper. He knew the chapter of their life together had closed. As the seasons changed, Robert found himself at a crossroads. The house they had once shared, 
filled with laughter, love, and tears, now felt like a prison of memories. Every room echoed with the ghosts of their past, suffocating him with nostalgia and regret. The burden became too much to bear. In a moment of clarity, he made a bold choice. He would give the house to his eldest son and his family, severing the ties to the memories that haunted him, and purchased a quaint cabin in the mountains, far from the city where everything had gone wrong. Here, in the solitude of nature, he hoped to rediscover himself and reclaim his future. A small house, like a hidden gem, stood among a sea of towering trees, its rustic charm enveloped by the enchanting symphony of nature. Here, he found refuge from the world, a sanctuary where he could hide from the relentless scrutiny and judgment of others. At first, the solitude felt like a heavy blanket, suffocating and filled with echoes of that fateful night, memories of which endlessly swirled in his mind, refusing to let go. However, as days turned into weeks, the majestic mountains began to work their magic. Robert discovered a new rhythm of life that brought him peace. Mornings were spent embraced by the forest, the crisp mountain air invigorating his spirit as he made his way along winding trails. Each step on the crunchy leaves beneath his boots felt like a small victory over the burdens of the past. In the afternoons, he would cast his fishing line into the clear waters of a nearby river, and the gentle current would draw his focus. The pleasure of fishing became a delightful diversion, a brief escape from the relentless flow of his thoughts. As the sun dipped below the horizon, evenings turned into a ritual of warmth and reflection. He would settle by the crackling fire, the flickering flames dancing in the cool night air. Sipping on steaming coffee or whiskey, he savored the simplicity of his new existence. Gone were the expectations and pressures of city life. Here, it was just him, the mountains, and the soothing whisper of the wild. In this peaceful cocoon, the haunting memories of Laura and Marcus began to fade, gradually replaced by the promise of healing and renewal. He wanted to spend the rest of his old age in this place. With each passing day, the grip of his past loosened, fading like the final echoes of a distant storm. The nights spent in cold sweats, plagued by unrelenting nightmares, had disappeared. Instead, Robert began to wake up with a sense of joy, relishing the peace and solitude that had become his refuge. One evening, as he sat by the crackling fireplace, mesmerized by the flickering flames, a realization dawned on him. For the first time in what felt like an eternity, he was truly content. He had walked through the darkest valleys of his existence, facing moments that threatened to consume him. Yet, despite the scars marking his journey, he emerged not just alive, but revitalized. Betrayal, violence, and haunting loss were no longer chains binding him, but mere echoes of a past he had finally put to rest. The fire cast a warm, inviting glow over the small cabin, and Robert couldn't help but smile. He had reclaimed his life, piecing together his shattered self in the tranquil embrace of the mountains. The man once broken by betrayal had risen anew, discovering the possibility of starting over, free from the shadows that had loomed over him for so long. The future remained uncertain, but for the first time in years, Robert didn't dread what lay ahead. He had faced the abyss and emerged not just unscathed, but transformed. As he watched the flames dance, he felt not only the closure of a turbulent chapter, but the dawn of a new one. The past was a closed book, and the future, whatever it held, was a blank page awaiting his touch. My friend, and this is the end of the story. If you liked this story, then put your royal like and subscribe to the channel. May the force be with you.